block up to my feet, hurt the slayer, yeah, yeah. better yeah. off work to the good, I'm bad, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. took a ride in the L, L, come on, man, yeah. Yeah. I'm told yeah. to hold down, where to kill me. Where did Grass House go? Where'd it go? Ah, uh, man, that's, that's, a, that's a story, bro. Um, <coughs> I think we talked about it before in prior conversations. Um, it all, man, it kind of like, the money wasn't right, I guess, because a lot of the things we did do, we didn't have any proper management, you know what I mean? Right. But like me, I was trying to manage it as best I could as a youngster, but that wasn't something I was good at, you know what I mean? Right. Even though I wanted to try it, but, you know, it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't working. We needed a true manager that knew the business more than us niggas that come off the streets, you know what I mean? Right. Not that I wasn't. Not up for the challenge, but uh, I, it could have used a better manager than me because I wasn't I wasn't the one. Um, right. So the money wasn't going right, um, in but you know, we still make money. You know what I mean? Right. So we put the money back into equipment, CDs. That at the time was burning CDs and just trying to travel and go to shows. But after a while, um, I think Yale Dale when he finally messed messed with this one chick that he uh, they, they ended up getting married. She actually pulled him away from all that. You know right. I mean? So once she pulled him away from all of it, and that's when everything just disbanded, man. I think that was back in 2001, 2002, somewhere around there. Right. Yeah. No, probably 2003, I think. Is, that's when it, it all, everybody just kind of went their own separate ways. And we went to another studio and was dropping music with them. But it wasn't the same, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you, you build, all those years, you building up this, this, this this family, you know right. what I mean? Like we was like when we go to the studio, it wasn't nothing for a nigga like drop like hey I'm bringing something to eat, you know what I mean? Well, who's all there? I'm, everybody, anybody needs something? It's just, it was just like a family, bro. Right. We just, it was that's how Grass House was. That's how the Crooks was, man. Because really, most of them niggas in the Crooks were family, you know what I mean? Right. I was just the one of those niggas that was just like a solo nigga that's. Didn't really have family in it, but I was family to them. You know? Right. So we kind of all grew up together. So, but when it disbanded, it was it was it was kind of bittersweet because we was really wanting to finish what we started, but I, it just I mean it was it was this time to do it. You know what I mean? So now we got other ambitions. Um, like I said, I started writing after that. I started doing magazines, and now I'm into a movie and film and shit like that. So. Let's talk about that. So the movies and film, like, what inspired you to get into this movie? Because now I see you, you bringing out the film, you bringing out the cameras. You know what I'm saying? Light like camera <laughs> action. You know what I'm saying? So what is what is that experience like? Oh man, I'm gonna tell you, man. Um, like I said, um, when I started writing, I and I was, you know, I did. I, I'm good with contracts, basically. Uh, I do business plan, marketing plans for the for people that that, that I know, and Mr. E happened to be with one of the dudes I was messing with back in the days. So right. He was a youngster at the time. He was trying to do his thing. He was doing producing beats and shit. So I sat down with him and just helped him with shit. You know what I mean? Just right. little shit to make him just keep going and keep your business going. Right. And so he he, was, he came to me like, man, I'm a finna do a movie. I mean, this is Triple D to the first one. Right. He's like, can you help me with the contracts or whatever? I said, man, I got you, man. So that's kind of my beginnings in the movie industry. So we did that. We got a good deal out of it. They they did the movie and we premiered it and it was it was a dope ass premiere. I was there, I was tired as hell, but I went there. And then we <laughs> a couple of years later came back with Triple D uh the revenge. So we same thing, contracts, put it all together, have people look at the uh, marketing plan, they loved it, and put that hoe out too. And right. so once we did those two movies, I was like, man. You know, I, I I was already in the in the mindset of directing. I wanted to be a director eventually, but right. working with him and being behind what he's doing, I understood the business better. Right. And so, as I wanted to progress, I, I actually got involved with another guy. His name London Williams. He's um he's a big old film producer. He actually out of Pleasant Grove back in the day. He don't, I don't think he's still living Pleasant Grove, but he's been doing big films. He's been on BET. He actually put together um. Like the plans for concerts for Jay Z and all these these big artists and shit like that, and I'm like, damn. So I told him, I said, this is my, this is what I want to do. I gave him the direct um, avenue I was going to take. I said, first, I just want to just learn how the film industry right. goes, right? You know, from his perspective, and then I want to actually be a um, an, an AD, which is assistant director, and then I want to direct. 
And I bypassed all that. So he just put me on set and just, hey, look, I want you to be a PA, which is a production assistant. Just mm-hmm. just go around and just, just learn everything you can learn as you go. And this this is a movie that will be coming out. It's this it's a martial arts film, and it's it's a big ass budget film, probably mm. like a couple million for sure. Mm. So he put me on there, and the shit is dope. This this is this 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 uh, Vietnamese guy. His name is Peter Pham. He's out of Vietnam. He's like one of the one of the the super. I wouldn't say super, but he's a really known martial artist in in in, in Vietnam. He has a bunch of martial arts films. So now they're bringing them into the states, so okay. they can introduce them to people in the United States. So his his film is called Operation Crossbow, and that's the one I was able to be a PA on to learn. Okay. So we went out to West Texas to film. We got a couple shots out there, beautiful out there in West Texas. Then we came uh, back to Dallas. We filmed in a couple uh, in a big ass building downtown, which is pretty dope. And then we went to North Dallas off of Harry Hines. We filmed this um, this car warehouse with this man, magnificent Bentleys, all kind of crazy ass right. badass cars. So we filmed in there, and the dude is dope. You can actually look him up on YouTube and see his shit. And okay, it, it give you the trailer of of, uh, of that particular film. So learning all that and to see how things flow and how to do. I kind because Peter was the director. Peter Fan was the director. So I kind of followed him a lot and just watched what he was doing. And see what 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 it all entails to do a film of that magnitude, and I was like, "Yo, I think I got it," you know. But then right. I was already studying this shit on my own at the same time, so it just like it just clicked. Let's do it. So, but the film that me and Cal doing, which Cal, me, Cal, and Texas T is doing a film called The Board, I which is like a, Cal and Texas T. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. It's called The Board, and The Board is basically. Cal is is he runs a football board. He's using his name in the film, Cal. And and his sidekick is a nigga named Mav. Okay. That's the character's name on the film. Mav is a he wants a, to own his own dis, dispensary, basically. But you know, Cal, he he runs the football board, so he likes to gamble. His character likes to gamble. So they get into an issue where he loses a lot of money, so they gotta figure out how to get the money back. And as they trying to figure it out, they going through all these different things, you know what I mean, to okay. get the money back. So at the end, you know what I mean, he, he gets the money back in a way, but I don't wanna give the ending out to the movie. Right, now you but... can't get the ending out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, he on a wild goose chase, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. He gotta get that money back, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. just what it is, what it is. You know what I'm saying? Y'all stay tuned, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so hey. Black and blue cell phone hookup, a ver. See how you work. Hello? I want $40 worth of smoke. What? Spoño! Que mierda este Of course I do. I've been getting it from you for weeks. You mean you ain't got. What? I can't hear shit. What? Who? What? Ah! Phones are all fucked up. What? You got any reason? Who is this? Who the hell you think I am? I don't know you. I've been getting it from you for the longer. You better get me some smoke, man. I'm not calling you. Don't you talk to me if you ain't got no reefer, man. Oh, yeah? Well, fuck you. Well, fuck you, too. Eat shit, too. I got a dial phone. I got a push automatic dial. 